So in this part of the lecture, I would like to talk about the introduction of a tariff in the large country case. And in a first step, I would like to talk about the difference between a small country and a large country in the terms of international trade policy. Until now, we assumed that a small country introduces a tariff and this introduction of the tariff has no impact on the world price. So the price international was constant. This was despite the fact that we assume that the demand from the country will decrease. We saw that the introduction of an import tariff decreases the amount imported and therefore decreases demand from this country in the international goods market. However, we assume that this country is small, so that this decrease in demand does not affect the international price. P international was constant. But now we want to abolish this assumption and we would like to introduce a large country and it will be the case that the reduction in demand due to this implementation of the tariff has an effect on the price in the international markets. Therefore, it is very important that we are not looking at the domestic country in isolation, but we have to check what happens in the country which is implementing the import tariff what happens in the international goods market and what happens in the country where the good is produced, like the exporting country. So in the first step, I would like to uh, talk about this example where the US is coming up with an import tariff uh, in order uh, to affect the trade with respect to Mexico. So the US is the importing country, Mexico is the exporting country, and we assume that the countries are large. In the left part of the slide, you can see the market in the US, uh, the downward sloping demand curve of the home country, and the upward sloping supply, supply curve of the home country. In case that the price is equal to 40, demand will be equal to supply. So in the world markets, the demand from the US will be equal to zero because of the fact that the amounts of goods which are demanded are equal to the amounts of goods which are supplied. What happens if the price is lower? What happens if the price is equal to 36? When the price is equal to 36, the quantity demanded will increase to 24 and the quantity supplied within the US will decrease to 16. This implies that demand is larger than supply and the quantity imported will be equal to 8 units. So at the price of 36, the demand from the US in the world markets will be equal to 8. What happens if the price decreases even further to the level of 30? When the price decreases to the level of 30, the quantity demanded is equal to 30, the quantity supplied is equal to 10, so the difference of 30 and 10 will be imported. So at the price of 30, the quantity of 20 will be demanded in the international markets. When the price decreases to 20, quantity supplied within the US will be equal to zero and the quantity demanded equal to 40. So demand in the international markets will be equal to 40. When the price decreases further, it will be the case that this decrease in the prices does not affect the supply in the US anymore, but only demand is affected. 
Therefore, it is the case that from now on the demand curve will have a kink. So the slope of the international the demand curve from the US, like the demand curve in the world markets, will have a kink in the pink dot. And the demand curve in the world market looks as follows. We'll proceed in the same way to derive the supply curve in the world markets. Therefore, now we will switch to Mexico. In the left part of this diagram, you can see the situation within Mexico. And in the right part of this slide, we want to derive the supply curve in the world market. So in case that the price is equal to 40, it will be the case that demand is equal to supply, so that the quantity supplied in the world markets will be equal to zero. In case that the price increases to the level of 46, it is the case that the quantity supplied in Mexico is equal to 26, the quantity demanded is equal to 14, so the difference between 26 and 14 12 units will be supplied in the world markets. When the price increases further to the level of 52, it's the case that 32 units are produced, 8 units are consumed within Mexico, so that the difference, uh, like uh, 24 units, will be supplied in the international goods market. When the price increases to 60, the demand in Mexico is equal to zero, supply is equal to 40, so that 40 units are supplied in the world markets. When the price increases further, it does not affect the demand within Mexico anymore, so that the slope of the supply curve in the world markets will change after the pink dot is arrived. When the price is higher than 60, the uh, slope of the supply curve will change. Therefore, when we connect all these dots, you can see here the supply curve from Mexico in the world markets. Now let's uh, put all pieces together. In the left part of the slide, you can see the situation within the US. In the middle, you can see the situation in the world market and in the right part you can see the situation within Mexico. So when the price is lower than this dotted line it will be the case that the demand will be positive so the US will demand goods in the world market. In case that the price is higher than this price here it will be the case that uh, Mexican producers will supply something in the world markets. In the intersection of the world demand curve and world supply curve, we find the equilibrium price in the international markets. So here in this situation, we assumed that the world price is equal to 100. It is the case that the quantity traded in the world markets is equal to 30. So the Americans are demanding 90 goods, 60 goods are supplied. The difference between demand and supplied is imported from the world market. The situation looks different in Mexico. In Mexico, supply is equal to 80, demand is equal to 50. So the difference between supply and demand will be exported to the US. This is the situation of the free trade scenario. So no tariff is implemented right now. Okay, what happens if, in case that the Americans are implementing an import tariff in this scenario? 
First of all, we have to think about what happens to the supply in the world market. Now it is the case that the suppliers have an additional cost burden of 10 US dollars because we assumed that the amount of tariff is equal to 10 US dollars. Due to this additional cost burden, it is the case that the supply curve in the world markets will shift upwards by 10 units. So the black supply curve is not valid anymore. Now the red supply curve is valid. So the supply curve shifted up by 10 units. It is the case that the price which includes the tariff is up from 100 to 106. So the American consumers, they have to pay $106. This already includes the tariff. However, the Mexican suppliers, they don't receive the $106 because they also have to pay the tariff rate of 10 US dollars. So the net price, like without the tariff, which goes into the pockets of the Mexican producers, is equal to 96. Let's have a look at the quantities traded. Previously, it was the case that 30 units were traded in the world market. Due to the fact that now the price is higher, it will be the case that the imports decrease to the level of 17. This is matched in the American market. So in the American market, it is the case that due to the higher price, the quantity demanded is down from 90 to 83, but the quantity supplied is up from 60 to 66. The difference between the demand of 83 and the supply of 66, this is the quantity of 17 which is imported. Let's also have a look at the uh, Mexican case. So previously it was a case that 80 units were produced, 50 units were consumed, so 30 units were exported. Due to the fact that now the net price is decreasing to the level of 96, it's a case that the quantity supplied is down from 80 to 74. The quantity demanded is up from 50 to 57. And hence, only 17 units are exported. What is very important to see here is that the net world market price decreases. So due to the fact that the Americans came up with this import tariff, it's the case that the quantity de demanded from the US in the world market decreased, and this has an effect on the net price in the world markets. The international price decreases. And this is a big difference between a small country case and a large country case. I hope that everybody got this uh, picture. It's uh, definitely a little bit more complicated than the situation and the analysis in the small country case. Now, I also would like to come up with a welfare comparison. I would like to compare the situation within the US before the tariff was introduced and after the tariff was introduced. Like before the tariff was introduced, it was a case that the price was equal to 100. The green area symbolizes the consumer surplus and the yellow area symbolizes the producer surplus. So the area above the price line below the demand curve, the green area is consumer surplus and the area above the supply curve below the um, price is producer, sur producer surplus. 
In the right part of this slide, you can see the situation in the US after the tariff was implemented and the world price, including the tariff, increased to the level of 106. Due to the fact that the price is up, um, the quantity demanded is down and so is consumer surplus. The green area symbolizes consumer surplus and when you compare the left part of the slide and the right part, consumer surplus is down. The yellow area, like producer surplus, is larger than before, so producer surplus is up. Government revenues are once more highlighted by the blue color. Um, the government revenues are equal to the quantity traded, like these 17 units of imports, times the tariffs, which are equal to 10 units. So the distance between 106 and 96 symbolizes the tariff per unit. And when we multiply through by the quantity traded, like the quantity of imports, it's the case that the blue area symbolizes government revenues. Once more, you can see uh, some areas which are not covered, but they were covered in the free trade scenario. Once more, there are two triangles, this triangle here and a triangle there, which is not covered by any of these colors. So these areas here, they symbolize a welfare loss to the society. Let's compare the situation before the tariff was implemented with the scenario where the tariff is implemented. And once more, right now we are just looking at the situation in the US. It is the case that the tariff raises the price in the importing country and it lowers it in the exporting country. The consumers lose in the importing country and gain in the exporting country. The producers gain in the importing country and the producers lose in the exporting country. The net benefit of a tariff in country A, like in the US, is equal to the producer gain the area X, government revenue is equal to C plus D, and the consumers lose the areas X a, B, and C. So the net benefit of a tariff is equal to minus A minus B, the two triangles, plus the area D. Let's go back one step. So X, this is the area by which the producer surplus increased. The consumers are gaining the area X. C and D are government revenues, and the consumers are losing the area X, A, C, and B. So the net benefit of a tariff is equal to minus A minus B plus D. Let's summarize these effects. Once more, there are these two triangles, and these two triangles measure the loss to a nation, and we have a rectangle, and these measures an offsetting gain. The triangle A is once more a production distortion, and triangle B is a consumption distortion. The rectangle D represents a gain, and this gain results from the change in the terms of trade because the introduction of the tariff lowers the world market prices. And this, of course, benefits the American consumer. So in a large country setting, it is not clear cut whether the country will lose from implementing a tariff or whether the country will gain from implementing a tariff. So in case that implementing a tariff 
has a big impact on the world market price. If the world market price decreases a lot, it could be the case that the country will win due to the fact that it implemented a tariff. So it is very important to analyze whether the implementation of a tariff has a small or a big effect in world market prices. In case that the importing country is affecting the world market price to a very large extent, then it will be the case that this country will gain from implementing a tariff. Let's also have a look at the situation in country B. Let's have a look at Mexico. How is a welfare affected in Mexico? In the left part of this diagram, you can see the situation before the tariff was implemented. The yellow area, this is producer surplus in Mexico. The green area is consumer surplus in Mexico. Once more, before the tariff was implemented, the price was equal to 100. So the area above the price line of 100 below the demand curve, the green area symbolizes consumer surplus. And the area below the price level above the supply curve symbolizes producer surplus. So the yellow area is producer surplus. In the right part of this diagram, you can see the situation after the implementation of the tariff. The price within Mexico decreases from 100 to 96, so that now the quantity demanded is up and consumer surplus increases. The quantity produced is down, so that a producer surplus decreases. This area here was covered previously by producer surplus and is right now blank. So this area symbolizes a loss to the Mexican economy. Let's also put some labels in. So U, V, D and W. As you can see, when you compare the left part and the right part, producer surplus decreases by U, V, D and W. Consumer surplus increases by the area U. So this is the area U. And hence, consumer surplus increases. So the net benefits of a tariff within Mexico are as follows. Consumer gain the area U. The producer are losing the areas U, V, D and W so that the net benefit of a tariff is clear cut. Mexico is losing the areas V, D and W. So in case that the US is implementing a tariff and in case that the two countries we are looking at are large, then it will be the case that the exporting country will lose from this implementation of a tariff. Until now, we just compared the US and Mexico. What about the world? The effects for the welfare of the world are clear cut. It is the case that the Americans are losing the areas A and B, and the Americans are gaining the area D. Mexico is losing the areas V, W and D. So the part D is shifted from Mexico to the US. So the rectangle D represents a welfare loss in Mexico, but it is a welfare gain in the US. When it comes to the net welfare for the world, the area D doesn't matter anymore. The only thing what matters 
are the red triangles. And we have four red triangles. Triangle A and B in the US and triangle V and W in the world. These four triangles represent a welfare loss to the world. So in case that the US is implementing this import tariff, it will be the case that uh, the world welfare will be affected in a negative way.